Hey, okay, so Facebook is telling me that my signal is weak. So, okay, we're gonna see if this is gonna fly. Um, if you're seeing me, if you can just give me like a hey or a hi, I would really appreciate it and that would let me know if I'm actually live, guys. I'm not sure. Or am I just talking into space? Huh, you know, it wouldn't be anything new. Anyway, my name is Kristen LaDuke. I am the owner of Porch Nook, which is a decorative painting business located in Verona, Wisconsin. More specifically, my garage in Verona, Wisconsin. And this is my second live today, guys. Kind of intense. Um, but I promised Lori, Lori, you are keeping me honest. You asked for a status on the chandelier. And I'll be darned, I was painting like a fiend. I'm like, oh, can't disappoint Lori. Can't disappoint Lori. So between everything else that was going on, luckily I got everyone fed, watered, walked, bathed, and now they're all asleep. So I'm able to do this quick, Facebook Live and give you a status on the chandelier. I'm very excited about how this is turning out. Uh, all my peeps voted between uh, Heirloom Tomato as well as the Real Teal. Real Teal won by one vote, the Real Teal. And I gotta tell you, I'm really, okay, I am a little bit torn actually because I'm both really excited as well as really disappointed in myself because I waited so long to work on this and it's awesome, I love it. Okay, so why is it so great? Because I think I mentioned to you guys before, and I'm gonna zoom in on this for you guys. This original texture of this chandelier, you can see it's kind of like a pebbly, like a type of grayish surface there. And what's really neat about when you layer the real teal on the, and you know what, it's not really gonna transfer well, I don't think, on the camera. But you can see some of the original finish poking through the real teal and it actually makes it look kind of like a turquoise like like a stone because it got that little pebbly like rustic stonish look to it and underneath it and underneath the real teal it kind of makes the te real teal actually look like a turquoise stone loving it i am loving it um so yeah Lori, there you go here's the status that i promised you and also i have told you guys that i was going to spray paint all of these faux candlesticks. They're actually the same like stone color as the rest of the chandelier. And yeah, I got those done today too. And actually I got, I tapped into my inner MacGyver and I actually Jimmy rigged my Lucky Charms box with like a bunch of toothpicks to hold all these little tubes. I don't know if you can see them. It's going to fall over. Oh, am I going to do this? See what I did? I made them all stand up. Because if you spray paint these, oh, there they go. Um, if you spray paint these laying down, then they're just gonna roll around and the paint is tacky. And you don't want that because then it'll, um, it'll ruin your smooth finish. So I'm just gonna put these together real soon. A little fast here. Lori, I'm hoping you're liking this. I'm digging the faux candles. I love the white. Love the white. Now what's next? What's next with this chandelier? Well, tomorrow morning I'm going to give it another eyeball. And the reason, <laughs> what's interesting about a chandelier, okay, let me back up. Has anyone out there ever painted a chair? Could I get like a, an emoji hands up or something if anybody's ever painted a chair? And the reason why I ask is because painting like, painting this is like painting a chair times 50 because you have so many angles and corners that you have to make sure are covered, but not only covered, but covered equally. And it's, it's tough painting chairs. It's really tough. So let me just get these last couple in. And what's also interesting when you're, when you're painting, here, I bet, when you're painting lighting, specifically chandelier, well, any lighting, you tend to have a, you tend to put it on a desk or something and you work on it and you're painting it, right? With your chalky finish paint. And then you forget about the correct perspective. You're looking on top of it while you're working on it. But then you forget that you have to make sure it looks awesome from below. So you got to make sure you flip over your chandelier because that's where people are going to be digging it is when they're underneath it. So just make sure that's, that's covered. So again, tomorrow I'm going to eyeball it, make sure I'm happy with the paintwork I did, make sure I didn't miss any spots. 
Um, I am going to toy a little bit with distressing. I'm going to see how that works because I really don't know if the original finish is actually going to handle distressing well. I don't want to ruin the integrity of the surface. So after that, after that little test, then I'll start adding some dark wax and it'll really shabby it up. It'll look really fun, really rustic. All right, Lori, there you go. There's your update. Um, another little thing. Wow, I've been busy today. Um, I have one more dresser bedroom set, more specifically a three drawer chest of drawers and one nightstand. Um, I did have two nightstands, but I gave one to my son because he wanted to paint something. He says, Mom, I want to make a piece. I want to sell a piece. Seven-year-old. Love it. He's doing a great job. So I only have one nightstand and one dresser. Anyway, what's going on is that I decided for that final set that I'm going to paint it all gray. And then also, let me show you. I'm going to, um, it's inspired by the Palace of Versailles. I mentioned this a couple of weeks back about my plans for this last set. Um, uh, inspired by the Palace of Versailles in, in, you know, in Paris, outside of Paris, where we just recently took a trip, me and my family. And I love the Hall of Mirrors. Well, anything shiny, I love anything. Anyway, um, I found this contact paper and I want to put it in front of the drawer so it kind of gives that Frenchy glass front look. So we'll see if that works out well. Also, I realized, oh God, okay, out of my line of chalky finish paint, I don't actually have a gray. And then it dawned on me, ah, why don't I just combine my charcoal black and add some of my Old Faithful white and just create a gray. Um, and I actually, I create a little swatch card here and I wanted to share it with you guys. I just did it and it's wet, so it may actually drip. But here, I just wanted to show you, and the lighting's not too good. I'll take a picture later and I'll post it. So here's my charcoal black. And here is, um, this is like four parts Old Faithful White, one part charcoal black. Then two parts Old Faithful, one part charcoal black. And that just gets deeper and deeper. And here I believe this is, uh, I have it written down. Where's my post-it? Oh God, I gotta find my post-it or else I won't know. I'll find it. It's here somewhere. Anyway, then obviously you can see the, the, the gradation of the darker and the darker gray. So I'm going to figure this out. I'm just going to make my own gray using my two colors that already exist. I'm so excited. All right. It's wine time. I'm tired. Are you tired? I'm going to have some wine. I'm going to eat some ice cream and then I'm going to go, go to sleep. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much for joining me the second time today, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for the inspiration. Thanks for keeping me honest. Bye.